Stag Nation, welcome back to the channel. Champions! As you know, we are continuing down the path of greatness. Reaching out through the Bitcoin uh, nation, okay? Yeah. And the community. Yes, bringing in more knowledge, bringing in more experiences, shared experiences, right? That's yeah. what it's all about, man. Growing together as a nation. Ladies the key and that knowledge <laughs> exactly today we have with us none other than mr rajat sony one cfa and, one and only the one and only yeah. okay has over 10 years of experience in the finance industry and is now a bitcoiner of the best kind you know because there's variations of bitcoiners mr rajat sony welcome to the show sir thank you so much for having me absolutely Thank you for taking the time out to come hang out with us and to just spread the incredible knowledge which you have, you know, because by the way, before we even get rolling here, I just want to just uh, let everyone know if you are not, please, you can find Mr. Rajat Sony on X, okay, as Rajat Sony Finance. He also has a sub stack called Mindful Money. Mm -hmm incredible information here especially if you're just starting to get into bitcoin wanting to learn more about bitcoin wanting to learn more about finances okay mm -hmm. of course and you could also find his links there or uh, in his uh link tree. x page yep. right link tree which uh, outlines his amazing amazing services as well okay right off the rip mr rajat welcome again to the show um just to give the people a bit of a precursor, an icebreaker, shall we call it? Yeah. <laughs> Just tell the people about more about yourself and uh, a little bit about your interest in Bitcoin. Because, of course, we're going to dive into your uh, journey. Bitcoin journey because I love to hear everyone's journey in Bitcoin. But go for it. Uh, so I worked in finance for about 10 years. I worked, in, uh, I worked as a trader on a bond right. And I realized how people are, there's, there's these massive companies who are paying these fees and they're literally getting a 0.5% return. And it was kind of weird, right? They're paying, yeah. the bank is making more money on their investment than they are, right? I, I, like how crazy is that? That doesn't make any sense, right? I mean, mm -hmm. once you once you see how the system is just designed to take right. as much value from you as possible, it's hard not to see where Bitcoin is going, right? When, let's say, for example, um, I used to work at, uh, at one of the big banks in Canada, and we had pension, we had pension funds, right? Yeah. So who are the who are the beneficiaries of those pension funds? They're mm. people who are going to get paid by those pensions in the future, right? So when the pension fund goes through the bank to, let's say, buy some bond portfolios, and they uh, they pay this fee. And the bank takes the fee. Who are they taking that fee from? They're not taking it from the pension fund. They're taking it from the beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So why would these beneficiaries want bonds in their portfolio when those bonds are barely even keeping up with inflation, right? So I started thinking more about that, and I, I actually started listening to uh, somebody, somebody who actually worked, somebody who worked with me at, at the at the asset management firm. Um, yeah. They told me about Bitcoin. They mentioned it to me. I still thought it was a scam. This was in two thousand and. I think it was end of 2019, early 2020. Um, at one point, he mentioned Michael Saylor to me. And I started, I guess, listening to his content. I started listening to what he has to say. Um, it was it was crazy. It was it was it blew my mind, right? Like when you think about it, everything in the current system can be created at will, right? You can create shares, you can create yeah. funds, you can create, you can build more houses whenever you want to, but you can't do that with Bitcoin, right? There's a fee. There's a cost yeah. involved. There's an investment that you have to make. And most people are not, you can't do this short term, right? If you're going to do it short term, you're probably going to get wrecked, right? If you're, if you're doing this yeah. for like the next two, three months, you're, you're probably not going to end up with them. So, so I started listening to, um, do you guys know who Peter Schiff is? <laughs> of course we do. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. I'll tell you about, about my how I feel about Peter Schiff. Yeah. Yeah. He's the best Bitcoin marketer ever. So his, uh, yeah. I was listening to his podcast. Keep in mind, he's a very smart guy. He actually knows. Yes, yeah, very smart yes. guy. Yeah. The I'm gold not, bug. 
I'm not taking anything away from him. His knowledge. Yeah, we we'll love him. We we'll love him. It's just that he has this blind spot with Bitcoin that he doesn't want to admit. I agree. Right. Like I agree with him on everything until it gets just to Bitcoin. Everything else yeah. he says is spot on. He's yeah. absolutely right. Absolutely. Until it gets to Bitcoin. And I'm like, man, I just don't know how you don't, how you can't connect that connect. final piece of yeah. the yeah. thought. But yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so I noticed I was listening to his podcast um, during the pandemic when we had lockdowns and all that stuff when we were. Uh, sitting at home, I needed something to do. So I was kind of, I guess I, I chose to look more into economics, learn more about how it works. And I started listening yeah. to his podcast and every single podcast that he would do, not every single one, maybe like one, one every two, one every three, he would mention Bitcoin, right? And he would say how it's such a terrible investment. Why would you want to buy this thing? Why would you want to do this? He he was, I think he was one of one of the reasons why I actually started looking into it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> enough, Incredible. Right? When you yeah. think about it, um, he, him mentioning it so many times, it was part of the reason that that got me to start looking because I was thinking, hey, everybody's, I mean, this guy's really smart, but everybody has their blind spot. The fact that he keeps yeah. mentioning it, maybe this is something that I should look into and instead of just blindly listening to him, right? Yeah. I started looking into it and I started realizing, okay, this is the future. And I actually have the book behind me, Bitcoin Standard. Um, that was the first, do you have it there too? I actually don't we see it. We have oh, it there too. Yeah. yeah. Ta -da. <laughs> uh, once I, I actually listened to the audiobook. Yeah. Great book. I, I, I don't personally like reading. I like uh, listening to stuff while I'm driving or doing something. Yep. Sure. So I do this differently. Maybe yep. five to six times, right? And just to support the author. Great author. He's he's awesome. I, to yeah. support the author, I bought the book. Um, excellent book. But I read that and it kind of ch changed my mind, right? I mean, once you realize that, okay, this is why gold is valuable. And Peter Schiff doesn't seem to know why gold is valuable. He knows gold is valuable, but he doesn't seem to understand why. Right? Which exactly. Kind of weird, right? Um, once you see it. But once... he owns a gold bank. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he owns a gold bank too. Yeah. Even that would give Peter you a Schiff. massive blind side. Exactly. Even for Peter yeah. Schiff, he makes his money from selling gold, right? He doesn't even make money from, <laughs> from, he doesn't make money from people owning it. He makes money from selling it to them. He makes his money on yeah. the feet, mm -hmm. right? So. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it all like it shows you how the financial system is designed to extract as much wealth from people as possible. And there's all these people out there who are promoting their product and they're making their fees as well. Right. So once you see that, once you realize that, OK, you can hold Bitcoin without having to pay these fees. There's no inflation. There's no maintenance cost. There's no rents to collect. There's no dealing with property. Uh, there's no dealing with properties. There's no dealing with tenants. All that mm -hmm. stuff yeah. is like. It adds up to tell you, like, wow, this this is the future, right? There's no there's no uh, counterparty risk if you keep it in a wallet. No counterparty risk. You're you're the weakest link at any at any point at that point, right? So exactly ask yourself. Why would superior you superior money? As some might say. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And then the only yeah. this is one of the only money the only only forms of money that you can actually hold, right? With real estate, you're relying on somebody else. To hold your property to maintain it for you to make sure that it actually doesn't get destroyed they're the ones taking they're living in it right they have full control mm -hmm. over it yeah right and mm -hmm. as a landlord you can't even go into your property when somebody's living there right there's all these rules and regulations saying hey mm -hmm. if you go into their property even if they're not paying rent we can arrest you yeah yeah yep. you really I'm own that to deal with that yeah right? you don't own it exactly do we really own it we're paying property taxes forever even for stocks, like if you think about it, these companies can do whatever you, whatever they want in the background. They can completely yeah. screw you over. It right? splits. You know, I think that that to to that point there, right? Okay. Um, obviously, I from my understanding, ever since I've ever been in the U.S., the SEC is designed to protect the people from fraudulent investment activities, right? And so, so on to and say. so forth. You know, I was blown away shook to my core when we had the GameStop situation and these people froze everyone's uh, trade. I think that was a very telling moment right there that this stock market we're all invested in. If at some point these people decide that you will not get out, right? They can stop you from, from taking what is already yours, right? Money that you have already mm -hmm. earned, pay taxes on and you try to further investments, but the money is still not yours. And I think that's the one point where 
I don't know, it seems people people today don't they're not able to make that connection or understand the magnitude of what that means to know that one day you can wake up and all of a sudden everything you've worked for is just not there. Yeah. I used to work in financial services. I'd see I'd constantly see people's accounts frozen, right? And they'd have yeah. wow. a couple million dollars in their accounts, a hundred thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars. Their accounts would be frozen because oh, they didn't pay alimony or uh, I, mean, I, I get it. It's wrong. Yeah. Like you shouldn't be able to freeze somebody else's money, right? I shouldn't be able to, just to enforce another rule, I shouldn't be able to, to take your livelihood away. Like, what if you need that money to pay for your bills? Yeah, exactly. Right? You're screwed. It's incredible. Double up. Yes. Uh, man, I was paying so much close attention. Right, Jack, you know I follow you like crazy on X. You mentioned that since you've worked in financial services, we have the situation of the bonds which for senior citizens, uh, they start telling you once you cross the age of 40 or 50 to reduce your risk and move into mutual funds and bonds, right? Mm. And then we have the state pension funds or the university pension funds. Those things are huge, huge amounts of money in those things. Yeah. But then those pension funds are invested in bonds. Some yeah. of these bonds are corporate bonds and some of these bonds are US treasury bonds. Majority of them are U.S. Treasury bonds. Yeah, U.S. Treasury bonds are printed out of tin here. Yeah. I will repeat: U.S. Treasury bonds are printed out of tin here by <laughs> our government. So you've worked very hard all your life. Maybe you didn't start a business, but if somehow taught you to believe in their system, to give you your hard work, hard, 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 hard money, give it to them so that you can put it in their bonds, in their fake money, in a pension fund, while they charge you a fee, and in the fake money that they put it in, it doesn't catch up with inflation, which they are also stealing from us, then you pay taxes when it's time to take the money out. People listen, you pay taxes when it's time to take the money out. After you take the money out, everything you spend the money on get taxed, right? Oh, don't worry about that. You can take higher risk. Put it in stock markets. The companies get to create any amount of shares that they want, any time that they want. They can do a front or forward split, a backward split, basically destroying the, your store value. Oh, don't worry. Real estate is better. You don't pay taxes, your house is gone. You knew this because you were in the midst of it. What got you to come out of it? Did you feel bad about it? Because, you know, I have people that I know uh, that have law degrees. And I'm like, how can you be a lawyer and know that you're defending somebody evil? But then as a financial analyst, knowing what you're doing, what made you say it's time for me to exit or uh, stop doing this? Well, I started posting about just stocks, real estate. I was talking about just the basics of finance. And then... I mean, keep in mind that during the pandemic, the, one of the reasons why I, cause I left my job at, at the bank uh, and I wanted to, I, I worked as a realtor. Hmm. Right? So I was helping people just buy properties. It worked great. I mean, I made a decent amount of money. I made, mm -hmm. uh, it's easy money. You could do like four or five transactions a year, get hundred grand. Percent. Yeah. Right. Easy yeah. money, right? People are going to mm -hmm. buy houses no matter what. Right. So it's not like people are going to stop buying houses, but the point is that, once you see it, once I pers I don't know if other real realtors are seeing it, but once I saw it, I couldn't do that anymore, right? I can't, I, I, I dealt with people who bought their rental properties, they bought their primary residence. Primary residence is perfectly fine, you need a house to live in, right? But people are buying rental properties. Essentially what they're doing is they're increasing the demand for houses, mm -hmm. increasing the supply available to other people. Mm -hmm. And I mean, instead of doing that, instead of taking that risk, why not buy Bitcoin, right? It'll give you a bigger return. It'll give you a, it'll give you a, a more self-sovereign asset. You can't, you don't have to rely on your bank. You don't have to pay interest to your bank every, I don't know if you guys saw my tweet today, but I, there was, I posted something about how if you buy a, a $625,000 house over 30 years at 6% interest, you're paying something like $550,000 in interest. Mm -hmm. Right, wow. $625,000 house. You're paying $550,000 in interest. So, did, 
this is what I would tell people that follow Dave Ramsey's strategy. Pay off your house. Literally, you're giving the bank your money. Yeah. Yeah. Ex exactly. Like you're 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 working for this money while they can print it out of thin air mm -hmm. and they can give it to you and they can charge charge you interest. Mm -hmm. It's like they're charging you rent on something mm -hmm. that doesn't even exist. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, how does that make sense, right? I mean, it's it's just it's backwards. So, so the main reason why I switched over was because I realized a lot of these people who are talking. I, I'm I'm not trying to insult anybody, but a lot of people who are talking about real estate being the best investment on Twitter, they don't understand how money works. They don't. They don't. Right? They people don't. saying that stocks are the best investment again. They don't understand how money works. I admit that when I was talking about that stuff, when I was talking about real estate being a great investment, I didn't understand money from first principles. Yeah. But you were Same good way. at it though. You were good at it though. Cause no, I, 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 was, I, was, I was like, man, this guy knows what he's talking about. Well, I think, I think it is I, the same for all of us. It is the same for everyone. Unless you get to that point because Bitcoin has not always been there. Right? No. So, and people have not always known about Bitcoin. Mm. What is really shocking is how to get your mind to go past, to have that transition, I think that it is almost like a thing where it is indicative of which people still have full autonomy over their mind power. Mm, mindsets. Versus those who are, can only operate on what they have been told. Mm. Yeah. Right? Because it seems to me that <clears throat> you can talk to, like say someone like Peter Schiff, right? <laughs> you can talk to someone like that. And there's a lot of very smart people in the finance space and everything else like that who can go on and on explaining all sorts of crazy things. But at the point where they have to hop over from all that intelligent stuff that is running on the fiat system and just remove the fiat and replace it with Bitcoin, it just does not click ever. Yeah. It's because I mean, if you think about it, I did the designation, the CFA designation. There was yeah. no not there was not a single mention of the US dollar potentially going to zero. But it's going mm. to zero. It's been going to zero yeah. since <laughs> it's 1919. It's it's right? it's, it, people don't see the other side of the equation. They see, okay, the stock market is increasing in terms of the uh, of Bitcoin or costs are increasing in terms of Bitcoin or Bitcoin is increasing in terms of, or mm. sorry, in terms of US dollars. Bitcoin is increasing in terms of US dollars, but they don't look at it the other way. Right? They don't look at how much can you buy with your US dollars. They they look at they look at the chart going up, but they don't see the chart going down. Or sorry, this one yes. going down. It's almost there, right? it's almost like they you need to plot the US dollar on a chart and show it to people every day mm -hmm. so they yeah. can see it heading downward as like, well. Like how much can you buy with the US dollar last year yeah. versus how much you can buy with the US dollar this year? Maybe if you yeah. interpret it that way, mm -hmm. maybe they would get it. I think even that's a little bit of a problem because in short term, in short term, in short time horizons, the US dollars purchasing power could slightly increase, right? If interest rates mm -hmm. go up and you have dollars, people will want those dollars because they need to pay back their loans, right? But if you look at it on a long time horizon, like five plus years, see, this is a, this is a problem that I have with a lot of people. They say, oh, uh, what are you going to say about the people who bought Bitcoin at 69,000? Mm -hmm. They shouldn't have, if they, if they're worried about Bitcoin being down right now, they bought with the wrong time horizon. Yeah. They, you don't buy Bitcoin with a three year time horizon. You have at least five years, minimum five years, right? Four to five years minimum, right? If you, if you're buying with a three year time horizon, if you're buying with a two year time horizon, no offense, but you're stupid, right? You don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I also give them the, the, the response to say, Yes, you bought Bitcoin at 69000 because the price of Bitcoin at that time, mm -hmm. because you're looking at Bitcoin from a point of an investor, because mm -hmm. you're trying to get some return on investment. But a lot of people that really understand money, and yes, they want the value of the money to go up, also understand that they need to get that store of value back. So it's the price that you pay and the sacrifices that we all need to make to get our freedoms back. Yeah, that's my response. Yeah, I think yeah. <clears throat> one thing that's one thing that is very common I've noticed is that when you talk to people about Bitcoin for the first time, or, or when you just, well, in general, when you start talking to someone who is not about Bitcoin, they would always say something like, "Well, I lost money in Bitcoin," <laughs> <laughs> or 
Well, I was like, well, I, and I always say, well, if you do not sell, you cannot lose because you're still holding it, right? You sold it, so you lost. Yeah. Or they would say, you know, um, it's it's falling, it's crashing. That's an interesting something because people are always saying Bitcoin is crashing, right? I don't want to put my money in it because it's falling. And so there's, to this point, right, there are people who are saying uh, uh, Bitcoin is going to pull back to 30K. That's where mm -hmm. I'm going to get it. 10k there are some who still think it's going to 10k at this point if you're peter schiff you straight up think it's still going to zero so you're waiting for this low low entry um but it's it's almost like if if you i always respond to people and tell them i'm like well you say that but you know someone who bought the bitcoin at five dollars does not care that it's crashing right now someone who bought the bitcoin at 20k does not care that it's crashing right now so if you just keep Listen, you can hold on to it and you see that at some point in time, you're not going to care that you bought at 69K. The other aspect of it that people don't think about is that, if, especially people who are saying, I just want, you know, we're saying, I want to make some profit. I'm going to sell at some point. You're selling this asset that is really steadily gaining, you know, and you're selling it into dollars, which is an asset that is 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 dropping all the time. That's the value. That is like buying, you intentionally buying something at the top <laughs> while it's sinking, right? And that's what they're doing when they go back into the dollars, into dollars. Mm. And it's it's almost like um it's almost impossible to try to get people to see that part. Do you have a way that you explain that to people? I, I just like to think of it as you shouldn't be thinking about the price. You shouldn't be thinking yeah. about the fluctuations. Just think about uh, accumulating, right? You can buy it at any price. It, it, it doesn't matter. It, even the people who bought it at 69000 will they yeah. be complaining when Bitcoin is a million dollars? Right? Will they be complaining when Bitcoin is at $10 million? They're going to be mm. happy that they got in when they did. Right, people who yeah. bought Amazon right before the uh, dot com bubble bought it at let's say, I think it was something like a hundred dollars a share. Yeah, it exactly. dropped to five dollars, but then it came back up to what is it now? It, it would be worth probably like thirty four hundred dollars today pre split. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you thirty four x your money. Do you really? Do these people really care? Oh no, I took a ninety five percent drawdown. I was so stressed out. Is that really what they're complaining about, or? Are they saying are they saying that buying Amazon stock literally changed my life? Right? You, you 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 are making me think back to me buying Amazon at fifty five dollars as a college student, and I sold it, and I still feel horrible today because that fifty five dollars I had a hundred shares at fifty five dollars. Wow! I used my college loan money to buy it. Yeah. But I was so broke as a student, <laughs> I had to go sell it to buy. It. I think I had, I had to pay something. And to today, I'm like, why did I do that? Why? Why? I have a very similar story with Tesla. I bought it at $80 oh, in 2012, wow. I think it was. And uh, I sold it at $82. Jesus. To pay mm, for my mm, tuition. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's okay, it's man. Story. You know, I, I bought I bought Bitcoin. I started buying Bitcoin. It was like 8000 And I just kept selling it back. Yeah, it was buying and selling. And I was just selling, selling it back. Yeah. And, uh, wow. Yeah, I feel that pinch in my soul, man. <laughs> it's okay, now you get it, right? I mean, if you didn't go yeah. through that, you likely wouldn't have gotten it, right? Yeah, and that's that's the powerful thing about it. Yeah. Once me, you get me, it. For example, I bought yeah. um I bought you know what BITI is? BITI. No, it's what is short this? ETF. Oh, oh. okay. Yeah. I bought the I bought the short ETF. Yeah. And I got I got hit bad, right? And that's the reason why I started going long. But you I shot at Bitcoin. <laughs> I, I was stupid, right? I, I made the wrong decision. I was dumb, right? Yeah. This was this was back like early 2023 when I was still learning. I was still yeah. pulling the time, but I clearly hadn't wrapped my head around it yet, right? I still thought I can time the market. It's like all these people right now. They're still thinking I can buy at 10k. See, the problem is when you get it right once, you think you're a genius. So if yeah. I had gotten it right, if if Bitcoin had actually dropped when I expected it to drop. I would have probably continued to think, oh, yeah, I'm a genius. I can time the market however I want to, right? The fact mm. that I got wrecked is what helped me. 
Absolutely. right? You need, you need to get hit. It's exactly like your, your situation with uh, Amazon, right? It's exactly like your situation with Bitcoin at 8,000, right? If you had been right, if Bitcoin dropped and you bought back, you would have kept trying to time the market. Hmm. It's a lesson, right? I mean, I personally yeah. see it as I lost a little bit of money, but I learned a massive lesson. It's your tuition, right? That's basically what it is. Mm -hmm. This is true. This is the cost of learning. Yeah. <clears throat> talking talking about learning. the cost of learning. Yeah. Bitcoin and crypto. Did you ever get distracted? Because I know some of us are still distracted. But did you ever get distracted into the block into the blockchain space? And and I'm sure with finance knowledge, I'm sure you're also familiar with some technologies out there, and the promises that some of these other blockchains bring. Honestly, you know I know that was. Did you buy any shit coins? I did. I did. Okay. I, 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 did buy, um, I was buying shit coins throughout the bear market. I was dollar yeah. cost averaging into them. Yeah, uh, so, I sold it a profit. It worked out well, but now I get it. Like, yes. So I had Solana. I mean, look, I man, this is what this is how I say it. this during there is an opportunity as an investor. Part of the mission is to make money. Yeah. I have some shit coins, man, and the mission is profit. Yeah. You cannot argue now, with the candles moving. Now I don't see it as being worth it, right? The profit isn't yeah. worth it when I know that this coin is probably going to ruin somebody, right? There's going to be yeah. people who buy at the top. Yeah. And they're never going to mm. make their money back, right? Mm. A lot of these mm. coins are like that. It doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter what coin it is. Yeah. The majority of coins, I think Ethereum may be like the one that, okay, it won't go to, maybe Ethereum will be the last one to go to zero. Maybe it will never go to zero. <laughs> I don't know. But how I, I like hope to think, see it goes to zero. <laughs> how I like to think of it is all of these coins are trying to skip the store of value phase of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, like when people talk to talk to you about Nano, for example, they say, "Oh, it's free transactions, or it's this, or it's that, or all the coins are already distributed." They're trying to skip the crucial store of value phase, right? That's the problem here. I feel like people don't see that. People don't understand how money works, so they think, "Oh, yeah, this can quick, this can do quick transactions." But you can you you can also do quick transactions with Visa. Why would you use Nano over? Why would you use some shit coin when you can use the fiat currency system, which is already working? But and pay, is and it, pay, and pay higher fees. Is it me yeah. though, or does it seem to me like everything in the blockchain space can send can do transactions? Like everything is doing the same thing, is it not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean they're all competing with each other, right? They That's all keep saying thing. quicker transactions. This is the only thing they keep saying. I don't know. There's nothing else. It's I just, just keep saying they are they are, they are companies hiding in, a, in disguise as a blockchain technology they're literally yeah. just companies ico yeah. skipping the old sec uh process they're just issuing their own coins right i mean I, of course there's probably like maybe there's 10 20 30 coins out there out of the 30 50 100 000 that are created maybe like mm -hmm. 20 of them mm -hmm. might do well in the next 20 30 years right yeah. most of them won't though right why would you take yep. the gamble like how yep. i think of it is let's say for example if i need ethereum in the future Mm -hmm. Ethereum will likely be bleeding against Bitcoin forever because I don't think as much institutional money is going into is going to go into Ethereum as it does into Bitcoin, right? So eventually, mm -hmm. if I do need Ethereum, mm -hmm. I'll use my Bitcoin to buy it because Bitcoin is money. Ethereum mm -hmm. is a, is a is a infrastructure. Uh, that's it, else, mm -hmm. right? And it's you not have money. a lot of Bitcoin to buy it with. Exactly, right? So yeah. all the people who are buying these coins today, they're missing out on on what what the world's standard for money will be in the future mm. right and all tell them that again sorry Ta i said tell them that again oh yeah <laughs> all these people who are buying all these shit coins they're missing out on something that can actually change the world right it's not even yeah. about okay money uh it goes up in value it um th the number go up technology is part of it but there's also mm. the other part where how many things today are ruined because we have a shitty form of money mm. yeah Right, mm -hmm. we eat shitty food. We pay. And that is the that is the main problem. We we'll go the to war. The key problem that needs to be yeah. resolved. Yeah, exactly. We go to war. Exactly like you said, we go to war. War becomes a lot more expensive on a Bitcoin standard. That's key, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you can print it like you guys, like we were mentioning before. Bonds can be printed at will. They can be mm -hmm. created whenever you want, and a lot of this money is going to people who. It's going to fund death and destruction, and it it also it also uh, fosters a lot of manipulation, actually, <clears throat> because if I look at so there is this post that you made uh, not too long ago, uh, which is showing 
BP and insider trading, right? So we have this, uh, seems there was a guy here from BP mm-hmm. who's going to jail for taking that insider trading information from his yeah, wife. That was yesterday. Yeah. Meanwhile, we have Nancy Pelosi, on the other hand, <laughs> who's doing the same thing, but no accountability. Open that Nancy Pelosi picture. You can see the words. It's kind of crazy how they describe her. Like, if you look at yes. the very last sentence there. So, it says, let me just, I don't know what I say. So, House of Speaker Nancy Pelosi's net worth has ballooned since 2008 financial crisis with the help of her husband's lucrative stock trades, a report said. <laughs> right. And while she is, her husband is being called lucrative, a great trader doing really good, but the other guy is being called a insider husband. trading. Husband insider. illegally profits 1.7 right? million after using his wife' private company information. Look at that. He made a he made 1.7 million, while Nancy Pelosi is now worth 115 million. 150 million. Yeah. Right. How broken is this? Right. Why? This is corruption right in the exactly. face of everyone. Why would you why would you participate in this? Yeah. Why would That's you a, why would you willingly participate in somebody's game when they control all the rules? Well, the goalposts. These are the things that we need to be asking ourselves as a society. You know, it's I, I usually say um one of the things I usually say is that, you know, in the current fiat system that we, we are in right now, as long as we have the Federal Reserve, right? <laughs> The god of fiat. The central banks. These are always going to be our gods. Because no matter what you want to do, the fact that they can influence the value of that money, whether it's by increasing interest rates or printing more of it and all of that stuff, right? Taxes, all of that stuff. It will always change the trajectory of your existence Mm. naturally. Okay. So unless we can take back the power of the money from these people, we'll always be enslaved, essentially, is what it is, as we are under this fiat system. Now, the fact that they're able to print it and all of us have to work for it, that is already... Slavery. Slavery. That is already a scam right there. It's already, you know what I mean? And so if anyone understands that as a normal human being, if you understand that you're being scammed, your first instinct should be to try to stop the theft that is happening to you. Yeah. When we understand that this fiat system is a scam, as we know it right now, Buffoonery. along the same lines of what you're saying there, yep. how does one carry on in this sort of system <laughs> where you know that you are actively being robbed, manipulated, extorted, by a bunch of people that you cannot even reach out to. They don't right? care about you either. Exactly. Right? They don't mm. care about you. They care about themselves. They care about packing their own pockets with money, and that's what they're doing. Yeah. Right? I, I get called a grifter. I get called a scammer. I get called this and that. Oh, you're I've seen them. Bag. <laughs> right? You guys, all, you guys probably get called that too. But the thing is that we see something that most people don't see. Yeah. Right? More people... My goal here is I've probably spoken to maybe... Uh, 10 to 20 people who became whole coiners because of my content. And that makes me happy. I get nothing out of it. I'm posting yeah. for free. The point is that this, these are whole coins that central banks won't be able to get their hands on. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Right? That's the key here. The key here is that you take the money out of their hands and they're figuring it out. Right. They're figuring it out. They're going to start taking that money. They're going to start taking whatever they can. What do you think the ETFs are for? Right. The ETFs, they're, disguised as a way to oh, get you exposure it's giving you sh- shitcoin exposure it's giving you fiat exposure. i think the ET, that etf situation <laughs> i still think that that is one of the craziest robberies yeah that we have ever seen in our life okay because what is happening there is saying that you're giving your money over to these people to go buy the asset and hold it for you the real asset but you cannot interact with once you're in the ETF mode, right, you cannot send and receive the Bitcoin. Yeah. It is not in your own custody anymore. It is owned by them. <clears throat> and and if, they mistake, if they make mistakes, you're on the, on the hook. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. The tax, all the tax liabilities is on your side too. Right. And so if you, if you were to sell it, they will not actually give you the Bitcoin. 
itself to give you fiat, mm-hmm. right? So now you're really out of luck because you really don't have any Bitcoin. Kind of like the buns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, I know, I know. I think um, um, I know. I was speaking with someone, and they were like, "Well, maybe if you want your bitcoins, they'll give you the bitcoins to you." And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, "Well, this is the same group of people that took the gold of multiple countries, right? Back in what seventies, whenever they yeah, were in the gold yeah, reserve situation, nineteen sixty two, seventy two, or seventy three, and then they got off the gold standard." And when people ask for their gold back, they never, they never returned it. So what, they will not be giving anyone these Bitcoins back. And I just think that is so sad. You yeah. know? But you can't save them all, I, I would say. I, I guess there is a spot for the ETFs. Like if you have a locked-in account. So for example, I have a locked-in retirement account. It can't touch yeah. their money anyways. Mm-hmm. So the only thing I can do is hold fiat in there. Yeah have the etfs in there other than that i mean i don't hold the etfs if i don't have to i don't want to yeah, yeah i think i think that's a good conversation to have actually yeah. and I, and i will say for someone like you and i uh i think you you what he did was quite interesting so in with your current employer you could take money out of your kind of weird too you can put money you, out to, of your 401k. you can put money out of your 401k pay a fee for that mm-hmm. and then buy bitcoin directly Mm. which I've also done, mm. right? But for my previous, which is now on the Roth IRA, I'm doing the ETF approach, knowing that I'm going to exit at a point. Because mm. if I pull it out, that's a huge, like 40% fee for taxes. Mm-hmm. It made no sense. So that's my strategy. But I'm also buying like Bitcoin mining companies and micro strategy, those Bitcoin companies. That's the strategy because I'm still kind of stuck in the fiat system. Yeah. But I'm also gradually increasing my Bitcoin portfolio. Yeah, that's I the mean, way to go. I, I, I mean, naturally. Agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I don't think that that's bad. I, I think the main thing is just that you can have these other strategies, mm-hmm. but having the actual Bitcoin itself is very important as well. Yeah. Right. And I think that what makes me sad is the thousands and thousands of maybe hundreds of thousands of people that may never ever actually get to hold a real bitcoin because it's being held by the banks because i don't think these banks are going to be selling you know these bitcoins like that like blackrock and all of these guys so it just it's a i still see it as a robbery yeah um but either way (laughs) i think even if people want to sell their bitcoin if if people want to sell their shares they're going to sell them on the market right they're not going to sell them to blackrock Mm-hmm. Yeah. So BlackRock's never going to have to sell their Bitcoin. Their Bitcoin, the the Bitcoin that they have, I can almost guarantee. Right now, they have like zero point six percent of the total supply. Mm-hmm. It's never going to go lower than that. Definitely not. Yeah, that, that that was a question that came out recently. People were like, "Oh, um, but people can start requesting back for their Bitcoin." I'm like, the reality is this: when people request for their gold, the edge funds and these fund managers never send you gold. Your gold is stuck inside that gold ETF. They sell the ETF. They don't necessarily sell the gold. Mm-hmm. They just sell the stock and they give you back cash. Yeah. They're still holding on to the gold. Same thing applies there with the Bitcoin. Yeah. And that's the crazy thing, right? So you have to pay taxes. So when you sell your ETFs and you want to buy Bitcoin again, let's say, for example, you you keep buying the ETFs for the next five years, Bitcoin increase, and you're like, wow, this thing did really well. Let me learn more about it. And you start learning about it. You say, hey, I want to buy actual Bitcoin. I'm going to sell my ETFs. I'm going to buy actual Bitcoin. You've already taken a 50% haircut or however much the tax rate is. You've mm-hmm. taken a haircut. That's partly why all these people who had GBTC, mm-hmm. they can't buy back the same amount because they're paying taxes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a mafia system. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> right. So we'll switch gears here. Here is one interesting situation when it comes to just financial professionals, right? Mm-hmm. Given where we are with Bitcoin, I mean, El Salvador has made it legal tender. You know, we know that China is still mining it. Russia is mining it. This thing is not going anywhere. But we have people who are financial advisors. For me personally, it was someone who was trying to sell life insurance, right? They're coming at me with the pitch and everything. Mm -hmm. If you buy this one, you're going to make, you know, this is how it's going to benefit you over time. And I keep asking them, well, why is it that Bitcoin is not part of your financial plan? 
Okay, because I think that in this day and age, at this point in time, given everything that we know about Bitcoin, it should be spoken about in a in a very serious manner. It's almost disrespectful how it's not acknowledged, right? And when someone may consider themselves a financial advisor or analyst, yes, an analyst or investment specialist, whatever mm -hmm. they call them these days. It would seem that you want to speak about the one asset that seems to be absolutely demolishing everything to date when it comes to return on investment. What are your thoughts on this? And with this analyst, I mean, if you look at someone like Dave Ramsey, he's all about investments and everything until it comes to Bitcoin and crypto. And then they, they can't, uh, <laughs> their brain stops working there. What are your thoughts on this? And and uh, financial analysts not acknowledging Bitcoin. I think a lot of financial analysts are going to feel very stupid over the next 10, 15, 20 years for not mm. acknowledging Bitcoin. Because, okay, so when you build a relationship with someone, when you tell them, hey, this is what I think you should be doing, mm. your goal shouldn't be to make money. It should be mm. to give them the best advice, to give them the best guidance, right? So I have so many clients who are asking me, hey, uh, I will pay you to teach me how stocks work. And I say no, because stocks are not the future. And if you want to learn how stocks work, you can go on YouTube. I teach about hmm. Bitcoin because I feel like for, I, I not even, I feel like I know that this thing is going to outperform everything. But the thing is that most people are just looking for cash flow, right? That's the fiat mindset. That's the cash the flow. Let's talk about yeah. that too. Yeah. That's the rotten mindset that fiat gives you, right? So let's say, let's, let's go to Dave Ramsey. So Dave Ramsey is regularly talking about his mutual funds. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. charge, I was looking at his mutual funds. They charge like one, almost 2%, some of them. Right. Right. I, actually, I don't know if it's, maybe it's just 1%. I'm, I'm not going to give him, I'm not going to say mm -hmm. something wrong about him when it's not true. But, let's but they're charging say, something there. Yeah. Let's say 1%. He could easily mm -hmm. be promoting VOO. Mm hmm but he's not making money from it, yeah. right? So his intention is wrong. His intention, I mean, mm, of course, perfect. if you have no money, you're going to do very well by listening to him. But if you mm -hmm. have money, yep. he's the Something worst person. Because yep. if you're listening to him, he's telling you, hey, you shouldn't borrow money to buy a house, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you borrow the system. shit? From <laughs> yeah. yeah, system based on debt. Yeah. Right? That's stupid. That's, that's a dumb decision, right? I mean, for him, of course, it makes different makes sense because at 26, he I think it was 26, early 20 or late 20s, he went broke because of his debt, right? So he's yeah. traumatized and he mm -hmm. has never changed his mind, right? Mm -hmm. so for him, I guess it makes sense. But once you once you understand his history, it kind of tells you maybe this guy's probably maybe this guy's not the right person to listen to because he's been traumatized and he hasn't been able to change his mind, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. what's to say that he's done the research about bitcoin he fully knows what it is but he doesn't want to tell people about it because he makes more money selling mutual funds same thing as peter schiff he sells a lot of gold yeah and so yeah. they have to keep doubling down on this insanity which interestingly i noticed that they accept bitcoin for payment on peter schiff's website <laughs> oh he does wow i didn't know that yeah. yeah yeah and his son is a big bitcoiner wow yeah so these people could they also, again, some of them are just intellectually disingenuous as well. It's a trend that we've noticed in the banking industry. It's like almost a good acting school that you have to go to. Yeah. Like JP Morgan just today, out of nowhere, comes out saying, by the way, we can be a holding company for your Bitcoin. So wow. JP Morgan now wants to hold your Bitcoin for you. Oh, yeah. They also said the halving is already priced in <laughs> into this market run. I'm like, what does most that people, even mean? Most people don't even know what Bitcoin is. How is the halving priced in? People think, exactly. you know what people think? You know what people think for the halving? People What's think that? that the current supply of Bitcoin is going to be halved. So we have, <laughs> <laughs> and the, it's going to drop to eight, no, like 9.8 million Bitcoin. So what's going to happen is half the Bitcoin are going to disappear. That's what they think. Yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah. How is that well, priced? Far away. How is that priced in? That doesn't make any sense. How is that even priced in? That's that. Like, it just shows you that these people are lying, right? Like they they're yeah. lying 
intentionally they're doing this on purpose they want you to sell the news even even bill gates like bill gates has a great technology background he knows what he's doing he built microsoft he built uh he he did all that stuff yeah. and he's telling people not to own bitcoin no 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 that's you know, that's 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 the honest that's the honest uh lie because xbox you could buy xbox with bitcoin in 2013. yeah oh, i mean if i you, didn't know that you could buy it. yeah in 2013 you could buy yeah. xbox walmart was allowing you to buy bitcoin uh use bitcoin to buy make purchases oh. at some point as well well i didn't know that that is that's, crazy that's insane i did not even know that yeah. So, it, it, but that still proves the point. There is people are being intellectually dishonest. Because if you look at even Genli, uh, Gary Ginsler, he was teaching blockchain technology yeah. and Bitcoin at MIT. And now this guy is against it, but he was teaching it. So, it's, I think that's one thing is, it seems, it seems quite evident to me that we are winning as Bitcoiners. Yeah. We just need so to recognize it. Something that Gary Gensler said, I, I feel like it kind of bothered me. So he said how you don't buy assets because of their accounting treatment. He said yeah. something along those lines. Did you guys remember that? Do you mm -hmm. guys? Yeah, 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 yeah. He, yeah. He, he also recently said that he doesn't trust the blockchain. He'll prefer Oracle or an Oracle database. Yeah. So, okay. So let's think of it this way. When people buy real estate, what do they say the main benefits are? They it's, say the benefits are tax benefits, right? They're, they're related to taxes. Yeah, tax benefits. Isn't that yeah. accounting? Cash flow. <laughs> is this true? <laughs> He's saying that people shouldn't buy Bitcoin because of how its accounting treatment is, how how it, how the accounting works. But people are buying real estate for the exact same reason. People buy stocks for the exact same reason. Mm. So he's again him. He's being dis he's, in he's being intellectually dishonest. He's being a liar. Uh, he's doing it on purpose. He understands it. He taught a course at MIT. Yeah. How Bitcoin and blockchains work. But he's saying that, oh, it's worthless. He, it's, it's, it's preparing for his next job. It's preparing for his next job at the Federal Reserve. That is that is what is frustrating about these people. Because when we know these things that we know, that we know right away that these people do not have our best interests at heart. And there is something sketchy definitely going on. We just don't know what their final plan is. This is where I say this Bitcoin situation that we have going on right now. It seems like the only option. Yeah. I know other people would kind of argue for, you know, well, we can try other. I, I'm not sure if you're, you're familiar with MMT. Yeah. I think the money, money. The, yeah, the new money, money, uh, uh, new money order, something they call it. But mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole new idea of like, I guess, another way of managing a ledger, if you will for finances. But I think that we're past that stuff now. Mm, when yeah. you look at the amount of debt that these people have printed yeah. and the fact that they're just actively stealing from the future, it seems to me that why not? Why not try this Bitcoin thing out? And I don't know. I, I look forward to just teaching more people and getting more and more people aware of this. Uh, I don't know how else we can explain this stuff to people. But I think that it is very powerful especially how you you know you break down a lot of these things on on x there yeah it it's, did it's uh, absolutely incredible right judge you did a major breakdown last week about real estate yeah uh you know and my interpretation my my interpretation in my mind was yes land is limited but guess what humans are so smart now we can build up yeah <laughs> we can yeah. build on water yeah so how is land limited oh you want to talk about land as cash flow and dividend yield and stuff. Can you talk a little bit more about that really quickly? Yeah, I know you have a lot of experience in this field. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. So, so I feel like a lot of people will say, "Oh, um, I buy real estate for the cash flow." So I was actually spot I was speaking with a a realtor who's been doing it for forty years. Mm -hmm. It was in it was in one of my when I joined a spaces a while ago, and she was I was talking to her about it, and I was telling her, "Your cash flow doesn't matter, right? You're getting what three to five percent cash, maybe ten percent cash flow every year." Mm -hmm. Your property is increasing by 5%, mm -hmm. 10% every year. Okay, so let's say even if we're being very, uh, if we're being very, uh, if we're overestimating our returns, let's say we say 20% return on real estate. Does that sound okay? That's too high. I'll say 7 yeah. or 10. Is yeah, yeah probably like 12, 10 to 12. Yeah. 10 to 12 yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's think of it this way. Your 10 to 12% yeah. cost you a certain amount of money. Sweat. My Bitcoin, sleepless nights. 
Sorry? I said sweat and sleepless night. <laughs> my yeah. tenants, my, bills, my point, taxes. My yeah. Bitcoin made me 150% last year and I didn't have to do shit. Facts. Facts. Right? Like if you're if you're just thinking, okay, I just need cash flow and you're in your 20s, you're stupid, right? Straight up. You don't need mm -hmm. cash flow at this point. You don't need that money. You don't, you're not using it. You're just forced selling your assets. Mm -hmm. And you can't do anything else with that money, even if you're getting dividends, for example. If that money was reinvested, like let's say NVIDIA, NVIDIA doesn't pay a dividend. Look at how, how well they're performing, right? Mm -hmm. All these dividend investors would probably say no to NVIDIA. It does dividend, does NVIDIA pay a dividend? I don't even know. I don't think they do. I don't think they do. Right? So all these companies who are outperforming, none of them pay a dividend. Even Apple has a tiny dividend. Their dividend is like zero. So tiny. Dividend, it's right? almost useless. It's like it's yeah. useless. It's nothing, right? All people what are what are people doing with their dividends? They're just reinvesting them. They're just they're doing a dividend reinvestment plan and they're just buying back more stocks, like right? The same stock, yeah. Keep you all in the system. Say, all these people who say, Oh, I have tax benefits or oh, I get cash flow, uh, I get this, I get it's a fiat mentality, right? It's yeah. people trying to have their cake and eat it too, right? It's people trying to use their wealth, but also keep it, right? They're trying to keep their real estate and they're trying to borrow against it. Borrow it doesn't work it, that yeah. way. You're going to get wrecked, right? When, when interest rates go up, I know so many people who are selling mm. in a panic now because they're selling because they can't keep up with their interest payments, hmm. right? That cash flow, that, that, tiny cash flow that you were taking a loss on was, was it really worth it <laughs> was it worth it <clears throat> oh, cash flow of seven twelve but then yeah. you pay interest rates of six or seven but then by the time you pay taxes everything is gone you're basically at zero or minus yeah. two <laughs> it doesn't even make any sense like why are you why are you putting yourself through this why are you making the world a worse a worse place to live in it's yeah. like, see this is what pisses me off this is what makes me really angry when people say hey without landlords the world wouldn't exist right that's hmm, stupid yeah. as hell right it doesn't even yeah. make any sense because without landlords people would be able to own their own homes there would be mm -hmm. more owner occupied homes instead of uh landlord owned mm -hmm. homes renter occupied homes yeah right? maybe your home would not be an investment mm -hmm. or a speculative instrument it exactly. should not right. be a speculative instrument yeah. in the first place exactly. it should be a home like people yeah. wouldn't be holding houses for they wouldn't be holding 70 80 houses if they didn't have to, right? People say, "Oh, uh, I'm I'm not using my real estate as a store." Of, this was one of the stupidest arguments that I got. I'm not using my real estate as a store of value. I'm using it to build wealth. Isn't that what a store of value is? <laughs> right? It's like the SEC trying to change the definition of a, of yeah. a <laughs> yeah of a security. It, it blows my mind. I feel like sometimes some people just like they say things they don't truly understand and yeah. they want to convince you that they're right even though they don't understand it it's like mm. it's like with every other situation right like all these shit coins people are saying hey um uh with uh, let's say with it has, utility. Any say it has utility they have a great community the community is strong the developers are <laughs> You know, yeah. strong. Say like a pro. Say yes. like a pro. They all they all say the same thing for all the coins. You know, exactly. the community is strong. The developers are there. The developers are active. Yeah, yeah. And it has utility. It's the same. Like it's the same thing with real estate, right? Real estate has a community of people who want you to buy real estate, and they want yeah. they want to, they want you to be their exit liquidity. They want mm. you to pump up the price of real estate so you keep buying, and their property keeps going up. But there was somebody who was saying to me, oh. Uh, look at the historical incre increases in interest r in, in real estate price prices. If you look at the historical increases in history in real estate prices, by 2060, 2070, a single family home will probably be, be like $7 million. And guess what? The bank makes money the entire way. When exactly. you sell, the bank reset back to zero. <laughs> and <laughs> reset. And the, the whole way, you're their cash flow. Yes. Yeah. You think you're cash taking cow. cash flow from someone? You're their cash flow, right? Ah, talking of talk, talk, talking of cash flow, Incredible. let's talk about how we can reverse this cash flow to mindful money. Because your site is basically your Substack is literally mindful money. What got you to start thinking? We need to start thinking of money in a mindful way. Yeah, or changing our mindset towards money. Yeah. So, 
I think most people just see money as a way to get what they want. Mm. They don't see it as a tool to design their life the way they want it to be. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that's important. I feel like when you just see money as oh a way to exchange for things, that's, that's how we've been programmed to think, right? Cause our currencies, you can't save them. You use them to exchange for things, right? They're broken. Mm. They're designed to be broken because your government doesn't want you to save. They want you to spend. Mm, right yeah when you think of yep. it from that perspective it's like wow this money can be used to buy things that can be worth more in the future because right now right. The, the currency that i own is worthless it's it's literally mm. just a piece of paper right it has no value if it's gone it, nobody has nobody's losing anything right <laughs> that's the reality of it so when you get rid of it when you buy things that are scarce you're buying things that could potentially be worth more in the future, right? So let's say Bitcoin, for example. Back then, I was talking about stocks, real estate. Of course, stocks and real estate are going to continue to go up in value because they're pumped up by governments. They're uh, mm -hmm. pumped up by real estate investors. The when you look at it, when you look at money from that perspective, when you look at it from the perspective of this is something that can help me design my life in a way that, okay, I can work from anywhere. I can do whatever I want. I can go on trips whenever I want to because I have these savings. When you look at it from that perspective, I feel like it just kills everything. It kills the fiat system, right? It's because people aren't going to leave their money in their bank accounts anymore. They're going to use it to spend on goods and services. Like, let's say, for example, if you buy Bitcoin with your money, you're not leaving your money in your bank account. You're, you have Bitcoin, right? You got rid of your money. You took Bitcoin. Somebody else has that money now. So now it's somebody else's responsibility. So the demand for that dollar is going down, right? When you when you look at it from that perspective, when you look at it from just the perspective of money isn't just something that you spend, it's something that you can use to, to improve your life, it changes things, right? It changes it changes how you think. It when you start living below your means, when you spend less than you earn, mm -hmm. you you now have freedom, right? You now have a way to build your future exactly the way that you want it to be right if you have kids you can spend more time with them if you have a wife a husband you can spend more time with them if you have grandparents if you have parents you spend more time yeah. because now you have freedom right you can do whatever you want to instead of spending your life you're, you're not spending money you're spending your life on just random shit that's mm -hmm. it it's your life your mm -hmm. life yeah people are replacing their time and the entire life for paper exactly you spend your life yeah. on 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 helping another business to achieve its goals and then you're spending that money on just things that you don't even need because you saw an advertisement when you when you see the the patterns it breaks everything right it, it stops you from doing this the the mindless spending right i used to be one of those people who would spend money on I, I, there's this uh there's this forum called red flag deals yeah. I'd constantly go on there. Like whenever I'd have some free time, I'd go on there. I'd see, oh, what's on sale? What do I want? What do I want to buy? That was one of the ways that I was spending so much money on just dumb shit. Hmm. Right. And I don't feel, I don't do that anymore because I realized I don't need this random piece of equipment. Yeah. I can get away without it. Like I've had my lap. Okay. So I was thinking of getting a laptop, a new laptop a, a little while ago. My laptop is from 2014. I haven't changed it. <laughs> because i want to stack more sats yeah. right i could easily go and get a 800 900 laptop but how much is 800 900 worth 0 0.02 bitcoin mm. right yeah. that laptop will be worth that laptop will cost me maybe two hundred thousand dollars but we need to, we, need, we need to ensure that we'll secure your main of <laughs> You know, I think that's one thing with Bitcoin, man. It makes you start doing an opportunity cost analysis on everything, man. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's like you try to go anywhere and it's like, oh, but I could buy more Bitcoin. Yeah. Oh, you take Wait, a flight over here. Ah, oh, but I could buy more Bitcoin now. Eventually, that 0 0.02 Bitcoin is going to be worth a lot more than it is today, right? It's going to cost me. It, it, I, I can genuinely see Bitcoin going to a million, 10 million, 100 million dollars. Right. Yeah. Have you guys seen the charts for the Nigerian Naira to uh, to the US dollar? Yes. I also read about it yesterday. I saw some of those charts. I thought that was incredible. It's crazy. Uh, what was happening there when you put the Bitcoin against the Naira? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like when you when you think of it from that perspective, 
okay, so the US dollar was it was 60 69,000 US dollars in 21 Yes, I found it here. Yeah, I think the this, Naira uh, was 64,000 Naira mm -hmm. in 20, what was it, 20, 2015. Yeah, That's yeah I have the chart up here now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in 2015, one Bitcoin was 64,000 Naira. Today it's 82 million. Mm -hmm. go, go to the, uh, wait, go go to the one, so I believe there was one is, where I had six, it was so 64,000 Naira. 2017. Uh, I see you have yes. 2021 here, uh, 20, uh, two, 26 million yeah. Naira it is. Uh, well, here you're talking about the yeah, all time it's, it's high. Up, yeah. That one's a thread. That one's a thread. If you just click that, if you click that post right there. Okay. This post. Okay. Follow it. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is a thread. Like you said, is the master of threads. Hey man, the guy's <laughs> master of threads, man. I, I, I have some complications going through threads. So yeah, look, we... look at that one, that first picture there. Go go up one. The first one, okay. Yeah, there. So you can see there, 64,000 Naira per do per Bitcoin. Yes. Today, it's 82 million Naira per Bitcoin. Mm. Right? Mm. And that went, that happened from 2015 till 2024. Talk Nine about star of value. Exactly. Yeah. Nine years, right? If you think yeah. about it, the US dollar is much better than the Naira, but compared to the compared to Bitcoin, they're both the same shit. They're, they're both this they're both garbage, right? Yeah. They're both worthless. They're all going in the same direction. Right? Eventually we're gonna see the same thing for US dollars. We're gonna see an eighty two million dollar Bitcoin. I know I think that's it's just slow that's, in the US. <laughs> that's one thing. One thing one 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 way you phrased it that was really interesting to me when I thought when it was the demand for the dollars is going down. And then that also, it makes you also realize when you're buying the Bitcoin, mm -hmm. you are selling into your a, dollars. Into you're a, selling your dollars. Dwindling currency. No, no, no. Re reverse that. Yeah. When you, you know how we're saying that people sell their Bitcoin into the dollars, yep. right? But when you buy Bitcoin mm -hmm. with your dollars, mm -hmm. you are selling oh, those dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're selling it, if you put that on a chart, it's going down. And if you see that, if you look at the amount, the volume of, of Bitcoin, Bitcoin that has been purchased right now, yep. then you would see that the demand for these dollars has subsided massively. And that should be reflecting somewhere at some point in the economy. Yeah, mm. it is. It's reflecting in assets, right? It's like, It's reflecting in house prices reflecting in Bitcoin, it's reflecting in stocks. Yeah. What about the recent massive purchases from the BlackRock and all of these guys? They're using USD. This, I don't think that will show up immediately, right? They're getting rid of their, people are getting rid of their US dollars. It won't happen immediately, but I mean, of course we saw Bitcoin go from like 39,000 to 52,000 in a pretty short period, maybe about a month and a half. Yeah. Is that it? A month and a half? Yeah, yeah. it's about a month that and a half, yeah. That was quick. About seven days. Yeah, thirty seven days. That's never a month and a half. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> keep in mind, keep in mind that a lot of the Bitcoin that they bought came from OTC. Yes. Right? It didn't even come from the market. So eventually they're gonna have to start buying from the market. Eventually, the people who they're buying from, the people who are selling over the counter, aren't going to be selling over the counter anymore. Mm. Yeah. Right? So they're gonna have to buy from market, they're gonna have to buy from Coinbase. What's gonna happen then? I think when the GPTC I, sales stop. Sorry, I said once once the GPTC sales stop. Oh yeah, yeah. From exactly. all the lawsuits and uh, and the, all the uh, uh, what you call it, yeah. foreclosures or whatever I think foreclosures, <laughs> bankruptcies. Was, I think Gemini is the one that they're selling for right now. Yeah, right now. Yeah, right. this week. Last once week that's this done, week. I mean, what's going to happen, right? I mean, if, if GPTC stops selling so much of their coins, then where are these coins going to come from? Like, it's a finite supply asset. Mm -hmm. I, I like the way that I think of it. I, I like to think of it as uh, I know a lot of people are against me on this, but I think yeah. before the ETFs have a million Bitcoin, I think we're mm -hmm. going to see a million dollar Bitcoin. But I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe Damn, that hell is Maybe I'm completely shit. wrong because Bitcoin's right now, I mean, the, sorry, the ETFs right now have something like 730,000 Bitcoin. I don't yes. know what the exact yep. number is, but the next 250,000 combined. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to have an exponential effect, right? It's not going to just, it's not just going to, they're not going to. Yeah, it cannot continue to squeeze into the range that it is right now. Right, mm. right. I mean, it might be, I might be off, 
but I think maybe by 1.5 million at most. I think I'm with you on that one. Right? Maybe yeah. I think it'll be lower. I think it'll be like 1.2, 1.3, but... Yeah, I think it'll be 1.2-ish. I, I, I think that's possible. I I mean, I've made Remember posts saying that... I've made yeah. posts saying that I think it'll be at a million, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm thinking it's 1.2. Maybe, anyway. yeah. Yeah, because yeah, then they'll have what? They'll have more than 5% of the supply. They'll have like 6% of the supply. Yeah. Um, and where's that supply coming from? Right? That supply is coming from people who are willing to sell. And the slackers. People who are willing Uninformed. to sell are running out. Uninformed. Yeah, exactly. Thinking, thinking they're taking profits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go find out. <laughs> it's it's oh, terrible because there's, keep in mind, there were people selling Bitcoin at 64,000 Naira. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, and now they can't. They're priced out forever. Who? How many people are? I, I've I've spoken to so many people from. I used to speak to. I, I, I do. I do one on one calls with people. Mm -hmm. I've spoken to people from Nigeria, and they're saying how this thing is changing everything. It's literally mm -hmm. changing everything. Right? Nice. People yeah. don't want to hold the naira anymore because the naira is worthless. They're understanding how Bitcoin works. Mm -hmm. Right. Same thing's gonna happen to the US. The US dollar is still stable, so people still defend it, but the US dollar is going to zero too. It's okay. I want to buy more. So <laughs> they should not rush. Yeah. I definitely want to buy more. Let me ask you this. Uh there is the peer to peer is the natural state of Bitcoin. Peer to peer is something that is really very important because another aspect of Bitcoin is this fact that it is bringing about a level of freedom that people have not had in a very long time. We're talking about Centuries. when you go all the way to trade by barter and a point in time where you could hold your own wealth in your hand. We can see that even <clears throat> if you look at it on the, ge on the geopolitical stage, you see that this thing has now opened a window where geopolitics has been I mean, it's changing rapidly across the globe. When the U.S. decided to use the dollars, right, as a sanction mechanism, they use it to sanction Russia and all mm -hmm. these other things. Mm -hmm. It seems that they now dislodged themselves from that position of power, where they were able to see transactions across various nations. We know that they would refuse for some nations to purchase certain things because you know, whatever rules that they had in place that everyone else did not benefit from. But now we have this situation where, you know, some countries are already accepting Bitcoin for payments. Mm -hmm. More African nations are in this very unique position right now where they can align themselves with a partner of some sort, be it usually you need someone who has nuclear power, so it could be Russia China, or China. Russia. And have different deals from what they had with the with the West, right? So now Bitcoin is just out there and anyone can use it. And this opens a window, a window of madness where anyone can trade with anyone globally. For you personally, what is something that you envision to see uh change positively like as as this as bitcoin just burst opens this possibilities in the marketplace in the global market yes is there something that you personally have wished for that you imagine that this will be like be able to happen now and is going to improve x y or z um you <clears throat> so i i i've always i keep talking about this i keep saying how uh real estate prices are going to drop yeah. Right. Because right now we don't have a, a global asset. People buy people from a, around the world buy real estate in Canada and in the U.S. because these yeah. these countries enforce your property rights. Like they're going to make sure mm -hmm. that if you buy real estate, they're going to make sure that okay, you keep it. Right. But who knows? Yeah. Who knows if that'll continue? Right. What if they start increasing your property taxes? What if they start increasing? Um, what if they start charging you? Um, what if they take your property from you? For example. Right. And they always do. They do. No, go ahead. Yeah, I say, and they do that. Yeah. They do that stuff sometimes. You know, oh, yeah, if, uh, if there's a change in plans, they start trying to, what do you call it, eminent domain or something yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah, where they try and come take your land away from you. 
and they can start increasing capital gains taxes. They can do whatever they want, right? Because you can't move your house. You can't take yeah. your house and move it somewhere else, right? Mm -hmm. So when people realize that, I personally think that a house will cost 0 0.1 Bitcoin or less. Holy crap. Right? I think that's the future. I Because if you think about it, how many houses are there in the U.S.? There's probably over 100 million houses, mm -hmm. right? There's 21 million Bitcoin in the entire world. Anybody can buy Bitcoin. You can buy 0. 0.0005 Bitcoin if you want to. It's a global asset. Exactly. 0. 0.01 Bitcoin. <laughs> you, for can't the house? Real estate, you can't go real estate. You can't buy fractional real estate. You have to go through a company like Fundrise, for example. You can't buy yeah. fractional real estate otherwise, right? You have to have a brokerage account to buy real estate. You have to, sorry, not a broker. You have to have a, you have to have, um, you have to work with a bank to buy real estate. If you're in another mm -hmm. country, you likely won't be able to buy real estate, right? Mm -hmm. With Bitcoin, yeah. you can buy it on your phone, right? Anybody can put their money into Bitcoin. Anybody can buy. I know people who are buying ten dollars a week, five dollars a week, a dollar, yeah. whatever they can afford. You can't do that with other assets, right? So when when that happens, I've spoken to people who are. Um, 18, 20, 22 years old, 24 years old, cousins, uh, my wife's cousins, they don't even imagine themselves owning real estate. Like they don't even think that they can do it. Right? Yeah. Right now, yeah. if all the all the people who own houses, a lot of them are, of course, Gen, Gen X, baby boomers. Um, yeah. I, I own my my primary residence. Thankfully, mm -hmm. thankfully to my wife, I, I wouldn't be able to own a primary residence. Otherwise, I was not good with my money at the time. Um, but I mean, the point is that a lot of people are feeling like they're priced out of real estate. They can't buy real estate, right? They, they just can't, right? So what is the next step, right? When you see that, okay, this is a global asset. Anybody can buy it anywhere in the world. You don't have to be a certain age. You don't have to have a certain... Um, you don't have to be a th certain ethnicity. You don't have to have a certain level of wealth. You can buy whatever you want to, whatever you can afford, right? With real estate, you can't do that. You have to have at least 5%, right? A million dollar mm -hmm. house, you have to have 50 grand. How many people don't forget people? about the credit as well. Good yeah. credit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly and if you're an international investor, you must be an accredited investor. I didn't, I didn't know about that. That's, I, that's actually very good to know. I didn't know about that. But yeah. I mean, if you think about it, even, even lending, it's used. Have you guys heard of redlining? Oh, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> we know this thing, man. Insane. Insane, right? I mean, it's, and yeah. it's just going to keep getting worse and worse, right? I, and that's, how, yeah. that's how the world is, right? We see real estate as such a great investment, but it's intentionally kept people behind. Yep. Right? It, it's, yep. Not like, it's, not a, it's not a coincidence that a lot of, I guess, black neighborhoods i guess i, I don't know what yeah else. i don't yeah. want to hood, man yeah, yeah. 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 come on man Take it on man <laughs> he's black neighborhood. feel comfortable yeah. we have feel to speak the truth to care. life yeah it's not a coincidence that a lot of these neighborhoods aren't they don't have high quality uh, high quality schools they don't have yeah. um they don't have a lot of the resources that other neighborhoods have yeah and mm -hmm. it's it's intentional right you can see the redlining charts you can see all the charts the yeah. charts that were redlined the charts that were just Mm -hmm. uh, the areas that were, I guess, you couldn't, you couldn't outcast get outcast it, I you guess. Yeah, the school system is based on property taxes. You know, I'll exactly. tell you something that was interesting. Casinos. Uh, there is, a, remember, I do not know about the situation in Bowie. There is a city uh, around where we live. And apparently, you know, it's, if you go there, it's a nice neighborhood, massive houses, the mm -hmm. typical American situation, uh, but it's predominantly black. And apparently the real estate uh, value in this neighborhood just doesn't go up. Wow. Never goes up. Yeah. <laughs> See, one of the and the houses are huge. Yeah. Mansions. It's, it's insane, right? I mean, what I saw one yeah. of the, uh, I saw, I was, I was reading something about how red lined areas, you couldn't borrow money against your house, yeah. but you could borrow money in other areas. These red lined areas were predominantly minorities right there were people yeah. black people brown people uh asians you couldn't borrow against your house so if you think about it if you could borrow against your house you could send your kid to school you could buy another house you could yeah. fund your lifestyle you could buy a, a second property you could do whatever you wanted but when you own a house in these redlined areas you can't do that how how much does that compounding impact you
Hmm. Talk yeah. about insurance. Insurance also yeah. goes up. We right. have to pay higher insurance, yeah. higher exactly. taxes. Right. It, 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 affects it, whole it all just it all adds up. It's all intentional. And this is what Bitcoin is gonna fix, right? When anybody can own Bitcoin and everybody has the same rules, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what age you are, it doesn't matter your name, your gender, your uh, who you like, who you care about, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. own Bitcoin, you are the same as any other Bitcoiner. Mm. That's what changes things. That that's what that's that's what makes things so much better. Even if um, like let's say you let's say do you, do you guys know how the Swift system works? Yeah, yeah. Well, come on, so gotta Swift. send money to Nigeria. Well, yeah, I gotta Swift. use the yeah. Swift system. <laughs> exactly. Swift ex excludes certain countries. Yeah, and think about all the people that live there. They yeah. can't have businesses. Thanks yeah. to they sanctions. Can't they can't interact with people across the world, mm -hmm. right? So all these people are now going to be able to create value and they're going to be able to accumulate Bitcoin. I would be surprised if Americans figure this out, like the, the regular population, if they figure this out before Bitcoin hits a million dollars. Yeah, I think I think by the time some Americans figure this out, the rest of the world would have already been just operating on the Bitcoin standard. Yeah. I Americans think a lot of them are just going to be so will become well the americans in general will be coming into this very late they're busy yeah, not trading not americans canadians too right a lot of canadians yeah. have no idea what's going on they just see their dollar as being oh I, it's so uh it's so stable i love it i love this dollar i love this i love this currency i love this currency <laughs> that used to stole it to steal from me but i mean they can't move away from it and it's going to hurt them it's going to come back to bite them in the ass exactly incredible well, Rajat, we can go on and on forever, brother, but we would definitely like you to come back to the show again so we can discuss some more things, okay? This has been really uh, enjoyable, uh, to say the least, man. Very smooth, very informative. And I think that um, everyone that watches this one will be better for it. Is yes, there? For sure. Is yes, there? So, any other questions you have, Double O, before nah, we man, wrap nah, this one up? Nah, man. Guys, definitely, definitely, definitely right. follow Rajat. Listen. Okay, I'm going to pull up the web page here again, Rajat. Yeah. This has been so oh wait, I think I'm doing the wrong one there. Let me uh let me <laughs> give me one second. <laughs> I definitely yeah. pulled the wrong one. Yeah. Yes. Rajat has a stops a sub stack, mindful money. We're going to have it in the description here below. He talks about Bitcoin is the basement resistant money. It is very important for everybody to understand what is going on there. Mm. Bitcoin, not crypto. He touched on this a little bit today as we were discussing mm -hmm. here. And of course, the Bitcoin ETF, which I still think is a robbery. <laughs> but you can learn a little bit more about that and more on Rajat's Substack. And of course, you can find the man himself here on Twitter where he drops knowledge day after day after day for free. Ladies and gentlemen, because this is what Bitcoin does to you. Yep. It makes you want to jump out and help the next person. Okay. Of course, Rajat also has some courses. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can always tap in with Rajat. The link tree is there in his uh, uh, X bio. Mm -hmm. You can tap in there and learn more about finances. You can also subscribe to the free newsletter. Ladies and gentlemen. Free. Why wouldn't you? I'm not going to read this one this time around, but I know Rajat already knows what this is. I didn't this even is... Have to see what it was. I just I knew what it was. Oh, you knew what it was, right? The yeah, moment I, you saw I, it, I knew exactly as, as soon as you opened it. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> how would you say it is like the constitution of the Bitcoiners? I guess. It okay. sounds about right, yeah. A purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash could allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. The institutions this is, that we talked about this entire Exactly. Video. And this is what it's all about. Okay. Rajat, we'll let you have the final word, sir. Anything you want to share with the people? Any uh, uh, where you want them to find you? Any services? Anything. Anything, man. It, yeah, it's all you. The floor is yours. Actually, wanted to ask you guys a last question. Uh, yes. What are your thoughts? What do you think is going to happen in the future? Like you asked me about where I think the world is going. What do you think the biggest the biggest difference is going to be? What do you guys think the biggest difference is going to be? I actually wanted to ask you this before, but we I guess we. Moved. Oh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. I like this. You want to go first? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think 
I don't want to call myself a Pan-Africanist, but I'm very passionate about Africa. I've literally quit my job to go back to Nigeria to start a business. Wow. Um, and unfortunately, I wouldn't say it failed. I learned a lot from the process. And in the process, I found Bitcoin as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy. Everything happens for a reason. Because mm -hmm. if I was still in that business, I don't think I would have found Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So thank gracious. But I think Africa's true independence, true sovereignty, true freedom is going to come out of Bitcoin. We just need to get that knowledge, that information out of uh, out to them as quickly as possible. And that's part of why we do what we do. And I could just see a world where Africa is free and we can be back to being nations of people that are not in poverty, in dire needs, uh, on our resources, add value to the entire global world because Africans are very loving. We 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 don't hate anybody really. Um and yeah, get Africa back. Make Africa great again. <laughs> Did I <just> say that? <laughs> <laughs> the strong pitch. That's amazing. Yeah. No, listen. Yeah. Uh I think for <clears throat> for me, man, this is this is what I think is going to happen. For one, I want to point out that central powers across the globe are losing their power okay whether they realize it or not whether society realizes or not but it is good that we should be acknowledging it because they're not going to come tell us when whether we're winning or not we are winning with bitcoin period that's the first thing secondly you know is i don't know was it three years ago when mm -hmm. you when russia invaded ukraine was it three or two years ago so, now so two now. years ago when russia invaded ukraine i mean first NATO, all, nato invaded russia let's use the right terminology here <laughs> anyway, when russia it. when russia i mean either how they want to put it right yeah. russia is winning the situation there so when russia went over to ukraine first of all we had sort of analyzed that that was going to happen secondly once that situation started happening we made some predictions back then that these sanctions were going to weaken the US dollar. And that happened. We also made some predictions. There's a video where I said if I was an African leader, I would realign myself with the Brits. Russian uh with a you know with you know with Russia and structure different deals because Russia is a nuclear power, which means that you have protection, which means that you can now push back against the West and grow your economy as an African nation, any African nation. That video was almost immediately after when that um, the invasion happened. And today we see that Burkina Faso, Mali, Equatorial Guinea, mm -hmm. somewhere else, right? And mm -hmm. one other African nation, Niger, so at least four Niger. of them, Niger, they're all executing that same plan. I don't know these people, I don't know these leaders, but the same things that wow. I said in that video are exactly what is happening. We called Bitcoin and when it was pulling back. Mm -hmm. we, we said it was going to stop at uh, what, 15K? Mm -hmm. Wow. Boom, right on the dot, man. It stopped at 15K. All of these things I'm saying, there is videos, evidence of it, right? On our channel. And so, where I see this going next is that this is going to continue to happen. The US dollar, as it is, I think that it has whatever, whatever sort of power that Fabrics the federal that reserve felt to, that yeah. they had to hold it in yeah. because they keep using this word capital flight is very important because as long as these dollars are staying in the u.s then they are in control issue of national security right but when you have usdt which is now blows it out to the rest of the world the rest of the world can use dollars whether they want it or not because it is all representing the same thing one dollar <laughs> And the value of that dollar, if the value of the dollar is falling, US duty, USDT is stable. Is also no, it's only as valuable as that is. I as mean, the, but what they the buy dollar Bitcoin is. and they have gold and yes, but you must be in Bitcoin. Yeah. The idea of the a dollar that is USDT is splitting from you mm -hmm. know the, from the USD the USDT that mm -hmm. is something that I mean, I'm probably not the best person to ask about but I see a sort of scenario mm -hmm. but I think the rest of the world right now other areas of the world where there is bitcoin there is also USDT mm -hmm. because people need that stable coin to exchange value right so now the whole world has a stable coin and the whole world has bitcoin and I think that this is the trend that is going to carry us forward
okay, in one way or another, whether people now hop off to another currency and trade there. But I think that that trend, one stable coin and Bitcoin is going to continue. And that is going to put many African nations in a very powerful place mm. to at least recover their power. Mm. And it is up to the West, man, what they want to do. There is a there, there is definitely a winning path for the West in this situation. It is a matter of what these people want to do, mm. right? Mm. Other than that, I think that any other nation that is outside of um, of the West, they all have the same thing in mind because they have all been screwed over by the same people. Mm -hmm. They all have the same feelings towards the West. And I'll add this. Watch out for Germany. You think Germany's going to flip on America? Dude, totally. Wow. That is totally coming. I think because, listen, listen, let me explain something. Let me tell you guys this. Let me the tell French you guys this. Too? I don't know about the French. I don't know about the French. The French always flip sides. Just I, don't, I don't know about the French, but you know, but I'm talking about Germany specifically. Okay. Because when you when you if you call someone your friend, mm. right, and then you go blow up Nord Stream pipeline, which is essentially like cutting off a freaking artery, mm -hmm. it does not make sense. Mm. Yeah. It does not make sense that Germany as a nation as well as will friend. stand by and not retaliate to that. Mm. Maybe they do not retaliate instantly because it is what it is at this point in time and they cannot win that battle. Mm. But I think there's one thing that we cannot deny is that right now they're getting armed to the tooth. They're suddenly accepting Bitcoin. Or Germany? Being more friendly. Yes, they're being mm -hmm. more friendly with the idea wow. of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're becoming more friendly with the idea of Bitcoin, you're naturally starting to drop away from this alliance of the G7. Right. So what happens next? Mm. Because you cannot do things like that to your friends and then it's all good. Yeah. If you know the mindset of powerful people, you know, they don't forget anything. Yeah. If you do anything to hurt them, they will be coming back for you one day. Eventually. So that's what I think is going to be happening. Wow. Yeah. Another prediction, guys. I'm so happy I asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> yes sir that's that's, <laughs> that's where i think it's gonna go yeah. but who knows who knows you might, you might i also like to think of it as like all these countries they have treasuries and they're tre like china for example they have what one trillion dollars of treasuries yeah and over the last True. little while how much of their buying power did they lose three and they've been dumping the, yep exactly right? they've been dumping the treasuries as well yeah. Why would they continue to hold the U.S. dollars? Why would they continue to hold treasuries? Exactly. You saw what there's happened no, in Japan. No need to. You saw what yeah. happened in Japan. They, 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 they're the biggest holder of the treasuries, and yeah. their freaking economy just got destroyed. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, I think that that is, you know, and I, I don't, and I don't look at it from a complex, deep analytical background of maximum finance sort of approach. I really just break everything down to simple principles, man. Yeah. And I feel yeah, like yeah. when you look at it from the very simple principles, some things just don't add up. It's so important to look at it that way, right? It, it makes yeah. it makes a lot of sense. Exactly. But that's where I think we're going yeah. with this thing. That's a big one, man. Hey, if it if it happens, you no, know, Rajat, you hear it here first. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's not something that I knew about. I didn't know about Germany. I mean, I guess that's been happening happening for a while, but. I didn't know they were becoming more and more. So, so what from what I have from what I've seen, there's not necessarily that they're embracing it right away. That so they have been, they have been. Um, it seems like there have been like some sort of like uh, parliamentary conversations, gatherings to discuss this concept of Bitcoin. Yes, mm -hmm. right. We know that they are definitely getting armed. I mean, Jesus Christ, if African nations are getting armed, you know, I think that, and, and it's really the same theme across Europe. Europe and Asia. Yeah, especially with the rhetoric from Trump recently, all of these guys are clearly realizing that they need to, I think, I don't remember if it was Denmark or Poland. I, it was Iceland, but there is one, there was only one European nation there where it actually it turns out that these people are armed and ready. And and they've just been very super quiet. But I think it's a, it's a very interesting time, man, because at this point in time, the interest of Europe and America do not align. Yeah. 
simply put it just does not align so it's either europe can continue to be america's bitch or they can go for what they want yeah. You know, I mean, we know England right now is America's poodle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this though: there is still a win-win situation out there. Yeah, simple. Everybody adopts Bitcoin standard. Give every country, every nation, their rights to trade at whatever value or currency that they want. Yeah. Remove the imperial power of the U.S. dollar, which yeah. goes back to your comment about the U.S. dollar going to zero. Yeah. A win-win. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. America still gets to win. I mean, America is the biggest nation with the biggest amount of Bitcoin. Yeah, I mean, America <laughs> is is a is gonna become a better country to live in on a Bitcoin standard. Yes. Boom. Right. Less it's wars. Still a great country. Yes. It's yes. a great country now, but it'll become a better country. Canada will become a better country to live in. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. These people right. just need to embrace it instead of yeah. trying to fight it. Is what it is. Yep. Exactly. Amazing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for hanging out with us on this one. Rajat, thank you so much for coming on to the show, sir. This one was absolutely incredible. Uh, I enjoyed I cannot, it. Yes, me. absolutely. I cannot wait. Please consider this your next uh, invitation already. Okay. We would <laughs> like to have you back on. <laughs> A friend of the show now, sir. Incredible. Yeah. Um, Please be sure to uh, subscribe. You see, I got to move that thing now down this way, but it's fine. Subscribe to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you found this informative. We hope you found it educational. And we hope you found it inspiring. Okay. Buy some Bitcoin. Learn about Bitcoin. All of those good things. We are also on X as Stackfin and, of course, uh, Spotify as Stack. Need to upload more episodes over there. Until next time, brazen out. Double O. Hey.